podcast. Welcome back, Hexup Slash. We're coming at you with the <laughs> just. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Dude, what All about right, a crusty? Can we get a crusty? Hey, kids. Welcome back to Hextab Slash. Today, we're doing one of the craziest 80s movie, you know, that there ever was. We're doing Killer Clowns from Outer Space. This movie is absolutely insane. I fucking love this thing. Make sure everybody who follows us smash those like buttons for this new episode. We love you. We love to hear what you have to say about us. Keep on watching. Keep on loving us. Let's get into our expectations. Why do I ratings. feel like someone's coming over to you right now with a slice of cheese pizza on a paper plate, and all you're going to do is ashes cigarettes into it while you're talking? <laughs> hey, mister, can I get your autograph? Get yeah, your sure, autograph. kid. Yeah. <laughs> Nicotine's bad for you. You think I sound like this on purpose? Yikes, this is pretty impressive. Justin, tell me your expectation rating about this movie. Um, I don't have one because I've already seen it and I already know that I already know it's fucking gold. So I can't even say I have an expectation rating because I've seen this I, shit a million years ago. I, and have I, just, to, I, I know it's good. I have to say that this is probably one of the most popular and like, I, I don't even know, B, mo- B horror movies that's ever been created. It's yeah. it's like i don't know have you guys like did you guys is this your first rewatch in a while like did you guys have this is my first rewatch since we started the podcast because i've refused to to watch it front to back since we started yeah i can't even get i just i know the movie too good i can't even give my expectation rating because i've seen it and i just know how much i love it so my ex my expectation is a great day to fucking be great talk about some climate let's go let's go water boy you got one or no you want to get into this I, I want to get into this, dude. Honestly, right, yeah, we, let's this. just let's just dive right into this yeah, shit because we, we already know. It's too, you already know. It's too yeah. good. You, yeah, already you, know. Already, you already know this. Is listen, you already know. Yeah. This is double diamond. Let's go. <laughs> All right, so we open onto Big Top Burger, where Officer Mooney is grabbing a cup of coffee before a nice long shift at the Crescent Grove PD. His coffee isn't even a to go cup, dude. I already noticed something and it pissed oh me God. off. No, no to go cup. This man has committed burglary on the clock in the first 30 seconds of this movie. This guy. He fucking he checks in with Officer Dave after uh being flipped off by a local kid crossing the street drinking a beer. Only in the 80s, guys. Let's go. He's heading across town and he's gonna check in at the local park. But now we're going up to the local makeout scene. It's called the top of the world. Hi, I'm Jojo. I'm ice cream clown with the best ice cream in town. We'll give you the stick. You give it a lick and tickle you all the way down. Ice cream, ice cream. We brought a goodie here for you. A tasty street while you screw. Let's take a break. Cool off those hot lips with our frozen fruity bars. Icy Wicey's, fudgy wudgy bars, and everyone's favorite frozen delight. The liquor stick. Well, my Just hurts. after this fucking epic ice cream intro by the Terenzi brothers, Whoa. and they strike up. They literally get enough beer cans thrown at them that they can easily collect these, cash them in, and go down to the Big Top Burger and buy a few burgers for those fucking hussies in the back seat eating all the rocket pups in the back. Because clearly, they ain't get the only thing getting sucked in that goddamn truck is the fudgy wudgy pops. Hey, what kind of girls you think we are? Keep your shirts on. <laughs> We intend to. While all this is going on, we meet Mike and Debbie that are giggling at the local ice cream men while they see a comet fly overhead. Mike wants to keep fooling around, but Debbie insists they need to go see where it crashed. We get a cut scene and we meet old farmer, old man farmer green, and he saw it as well. He thinks it's Haley's comet. And uh, him and his dog, Pooh, are going to be rich because thousands of people are coming. And just like Justin, they've got hot dogs, helicopters, airplanes, and fucking tacos. Let's go. (laughs) What kind of combination? (laughs) We're going to be rich, Pooh. Dude, that guy's acting. That guy's acting is so. He was so awesome. I love that farmer. And the dog like Pooh Bear. Oh, my God. It's already Uh, great. It's already a great movie. It's already great. It's so good. It's so fucking Farmer Green better be greased and fried like a chicken because the circus is in town. And uh, maybe he and Blue can get some free tickets because they love the circus. Now, while he's wandering around trying to find that ticket booth, a clown makes like a hole in the tent and he scoops Pooh up. 
Oh, I, I can't I, say I, that I, with I a straight face. I feel like I'm talking about someone scooping up dog shit. <laughs> I know. I was just going to say that sounded not It's a, it's a poo scooper. Right. But, but he, right. he scoops him up like a fish out of water, and the dog is gone. Farmer Green starts losing his mind, and he threatens to tear down that circus tent with his bare hands. <laughs> what in tarnation is going on? And instead, he you know punches the fucking circus tent and like breaks his wrist and then gets electrocuted and then immediately shot by a clown holding like some sort of a ray gun that shoots like pink lasers and shit we don't know what it is right then and there but we do find out what it does later on back to paradise cove fucking whatever it is crescent crove pd where uh these guys are listed as punk one and punk two uh they're picked up by officer mooney and they talk about how they're in college and they were just out walking around because it's a beautiful night. They just wanted just, a glass of wine. It was just wine. God, no fucking way these kids are in college. No. No right? way. One of them looks like he's easily 35 and could be given like lectures in a class. And the other one's got a receipt and handline that matches me and Waterboy on any given day. I was just yeah. going to say, I'm I'm 41 and that dude looked like he could have been like 50. Yeah. Like he looked way older yeah, than me. Was, yeah. What the hell is that? Dude. Teenager? And then, dude, Officer Mooney and Officer Dave start like tussling over these college kids. And the banter that goes back and forth between them is just so insane. And the acting is on two different planes. Officer it's, Mooney is just like hates this everyone. hard ass that hates everyone. I and kill them all. Least, and he's like a <laughs> shot of whiskey. And then Officer Dave is like, listen, man, you got to do this by the book. If you going to book them, you going to do it right. I don't care if you don't like my training. I'll take that badge. Long story short, Mooney tosses these fucking hoodlums into a hold and cell and calls it a night. We uh, we go back and we see Debbie and Mike. They drive as far into the woods as they can until they come across a gate because they wouldn't open it. So they just parked their fucking truck there. And uh, Chief running at the mouth leads the way to the circus tent in the middle of the woods. Debbie has learned from her time from surviving from Return of the Living Dead that when something ain't right, just fucking leave. Get out of there. Mike doesn't want to take no for an answer, though, and he wants to go exploring. He gives her two options, and he tells her, you can either stay here and be scared out of your mind by yourself, or you can go with me because I'm a solid boyfriend, and I'll take you with me, even though you don't want to go. They go into the tent, and Mike thinks it's this new French wave circus type thing called uh, Circus Fantastique, which is just him being a dumbass saying fantastic. I guess that's how you say it in French. Oh, fantastic. Debbie still wants to leave, but Mike thinks uh, it's been decorated by Clowns of Rust, and he wants to explore this area that they're in. They enter this, like, thingy-majigger, and they realize it's not its not a circus tent. It must be a nuclear power plant. Maybe a missile silo? It's a military base. No, dumbass. It's the shooting star from earlier, and they're in it. They try now to escape because they hear something coming. This new room they're in smells just like candy. They must be in a cotton candy factory because that makes sense. And this is where they hang it all out to dry. Debbie says, no, you're a fucking moron. No one in their right mind stores cotton candy like this. They must be in a UFO and they need to leave. Mike finally reaches out in disbelief and peels back some cotton candy to give it a taste just to see Joe Lombardo in a cotton candy cocoon. Say that 10 times fast. Cotton candy. Yeah, right. Cocoon. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they take off running and they're being chased by Rudy the clown. I did look this up and I did look up every character and I, I had a lot of fun with this. Like I did a lot of deep diving. Uh, Rudy so, decides to pull out a gun while she's chasing him or he's chasing him. I don't know the sex of these clowns. I'm just going to go with it. Uh, and it shoots fucking popcorn. Rudy only pulls his trigger once, but I see like four or five popcorn explosions chasing them like a wave. <laughs> Like an avalanche of popcorn. They get outside. They take off covered in popcorn because why not? Spiky, the clown, now makes an appearance. And he has a magic trick, just like Waterboy's Pizza Hat. And makes a balloon bloodhound to track them through the woods. Mike and Debbie make it to the truck just in time, though, to back up into the clowns and run over this animal balloon. Let's talk about, hey, so this animal balloon, I remember the first time I watched this. The second I saw that they had an animal balloon dog and it like came to life and chased him, I already knew I was witnessing greatness. And this was just oh, yeah, the greatest yeah. thing I've ever seen in my whole entire life. So I actually good. have like a little side note about this scene. I go, I feel bad because the bloodhound balloon was only doing what it was blowing up for. 
Not his fucking fault. He's good at his job. You bunch of assholes. Right. These kids are just, you know, popping animal balloons for no reason, like a bunch of bullies. And I'm so glad that Bibbo jumps on the hood and lets them know of his displeasure of their actions. There will be consequences for killing the balloon dog. Yep. Debbie Don't tells Mike she's got a friend at uh, Crescent Grove PD, and they'll believe the hit, like her story. So they head there, and the clowns also slowly make their way into town. I like how the, the, the score, it's creepy. It's like circusy. It's so much fun, and it's amazing. They pull in, and Debbie and Mike are just in absolute hysterics about what's going on. They say there's two people dead, and they're wrapped in cotton candy cocoons. Officer Dave is in disbelief, so he brings them inside. We now see Rudy the Clown standing outside of a local drugstore, impersonating a robotic gorilla, waving that people awesome. into the store. So I thought that was awesome. amazing. What is right? This? Oh, my God. And it's so, like, it, it stops in... Rudy like looks and then like puts the motion down. Yeah, he literally copies the motion of the giant gorilla. Yeah. <sighs> Debbie and Mike are now giving Dave the rundown. Officer Moody overhears it and basically calls bullshit on him, even name dropping the name of the movie. Oh, killer clowns from outer space. Great. Voice. I thought that, that was amazing. Gr- that, that guy's was voice is dude. He almost sounded like Leslie Nielsen when Leslie Nielsen would be like dude. serious. Dude, it freaks me out at times. Like he that's, really sounded like. I him. swear to God, Justin, that's exactly who I thought he who he sounded like. Almost. Dude, the boy, yeah, like when Leslie. I couldn't pinpoint it, but now that you said that, yeah, dude, it oh my god, me, it freaked me out. Like I was like, this dude sounds just like Leslie Nielsen. Like if they took his voice and put it over Leslie Nielsen, you wouldn't know the difference. Dude, it's crazy. I had to say so, that. <laughs> Officer Dave is still offended that Mike and Debbie were up at the top of the world together. They, clearly, there's some kind of tension between Officer Dave and Debbie. They got that double D going on. But Officer Mooney looks at Mike and he calls him a little fart because he's always causing trouble with the Terenzi brothers. Now, Mooney ain't having none of this shit. And he tells them if they're going to go off and explore this killer clowns theory, he wants a full report on his desk written so he can give it to the chief on Monday when he comes back. Dave shakes him off in disbelief and they go out hunting. Time for a late night puppet show in the park because this is a great setup and I would stop and watch this because there's nothing wrong with that. It's spiky though and he pops up his crazy eyed puppet with the ray gun and he takes aim at an innocent bystander turning him into a sack of cotton candy. Back to the drugstore now where Rudy has no manners and is actually being quite rude. Maybe that's why they call this clown Rudy. Rudy is trashing the store, and we get another cut scene where Dave finally confesses that he's still in love with Debbie. Ding dong! Chubby, Bibbo, Rudy all delivering a pizza, only for Shorty to pop up out, pop up out and zap a poor girl with the cotton candy cocoon maker of uh, some sort of ray gun variety. What kind of pizza do you think they would have delivered? Uh, I'd go Hawaiian. <laughs> it's probably something weird. Yeah. Definitely. And then we get we get one more ding dong ditch as Fatso shows up to deliver some sweets to his sweetheart. Just kidding, he's got a gun and it's shooting cotton candy right into Waterboy's turn. <laughs> and man, I just gotta say, Fatso seemed pretty pissed that he didn't get the credit for that box of chocolates. I got. I love, I got, I love his name, Fatso. Like how incredible yeah. do these clowns just like Fatso, Spiky? Oh love my it. gosh, Fucking dude! I, I I had to I had to look at all because they. They have names for every single one, even the ones that don't really get screened. Oh, dude, right. the, the the ones that are in like a scene or two, they like yeah. have names. It's oh I say I, I saved an image. There is what did I say? Forty one clowns in this movie. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so we got Mike leaving Debbie behind, and Dave and Mike head off. Uh, we cut to a local drugstore with Tiny and Rudy tearing the place up, while Mister Myers is just wondering what the fuck's going on. Back, he breaks. Back. <laughs> yeah, every time, dude. Every time, every time. It's Can like, we oh, talk what? about real quick? Like this movie is just people need to sit down and watch this because you just said two lines for a scene about like uh, when Officer Dave takes off with Mike. Yeah. Mike is petrified. He's like, oh, great. You didn't tell me he was your boyfriend. And then she kisses him and he looks down and Officer Dave is staring at him. Mm-hmm. And he's like, great timing. And he goes to get in the front door. 
and he he locks it and makes him get in the back. (laughs) And as he's getting in the back seat, he's already driving away with him in the car. (laughs) Dude, he 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 literally almost fell out of the car. Like yeah, like from the door closing, weren't even in it yet. And he was pulling off the sidewalk. He was like, "Fuck you, get in the back seat." Fucking bitch. Uh, so we cut. Welcome back, Justin. By the way. Oh yeah, yep. Welcome back. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm great back. to have you. Oh, no, thank sorry, you. <laughs> sorry, my bad. Every time, dude. <laughs> we cut to the local drugstore with Tiny and Rudy tearing the place up, while Mister Myers is just wondering what the fuck's going on. Back to Dave and Mike seeing that the tent had vanished and nothing but a big hole remains with Dave for some reason, not believing him like, dude, there's a giant gaping hole in the fucking woods. Obviously there was something here. And it's like right? perfectly like, like <laughs> it, it, uh, spherical. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, seriously. It, like what it's the like hell? something was clearly there. It was massive. It didn't just pop up one second and disappear overnight. And without anyone been in forever. town knowing. It. Yeah. <laughs> Haley's comet hit it and then it disintegrated. It was like a big water balloon, but the water va- vaporized and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> the heat. Cool. Yeah, something. <laughs> Dave arrests him for thinking he's lying, and we get an awesome scene with Tiny riding into town on his tiny trike into the biker gang, with Slug oh, so- wanting to take a ride on his bike, and proceeds to smash the bike up. And uh, poor Tiny, you see him crying a little bit there. And, what are you uh, gonna do? <laughs> knock my block off? <laughs> what are you? And then he does. He does just that. Knocks his fucking head off into the trash can. With the body limply falling to the floor, great effects. All right, great that was awesome for the time. The way that that body dropped, body Justin. Fell? Tell me, yeah, tell me the first yeah. time you seen that body drop, you weren't like, oh my god. Oh, it was that was crazy how it just fell like that. that. Good. Oh my gosh. Now at the local diner, we see Jumbo trying to lure a little girl outside, and just before she goes out, the mom intervenes and somehow didn't notice that there was a big ass fucking killer clown from outer space yeah. there. And uh, Chicago, do, they not who, kids. Do, do they not know who John Wayne Gacy is? Right. Yeah, right. <laughs> what the fuck? Probably should uh, teach your kids not to talk from killer clowns to outer space, though. Uh, no, you back- can. You just got to eat all your food first. <laughs> back to Dave and Mike. And Dave's checking out some cars and seeing one is covered in cotton candy and realizing Mike may have been telling some truth with the whole ordeal. At the police station, we get Curtis answering a call with the woman mentioning clowns at their front door causing carnage and a uh, very troubled cop that Mooney is uh, pouring himself a drink saying he'd kill them all, all those rich kids and fancy schools uh, back at the store. With he's Mr. so Mar- butthurt over Dude, college he is, kids. He, 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 he hates God them. Damn, fuck those kids. He's got some issues <laughs> back at the store with Mr. Myers also giving him a call and another call where the clowns took, took some guy's wife in a balloon. You're no. telling me that your wife got taken by clowns in a balloon? You don't need the police. You need a psychiatrist. <laughs> now we get an amazing car chase with an oh. invisible car. That's and he so ridiculous. the car off the bridge. <laughs> like, what the? Shower scene with Debbie with some popcorn. And uh, look at Jumbo throwing some into a local dumpster, which ends up pulling the worker in somehow. We don't see what happens to that guy. We then get an awesome scene of what looked like Slim being dropped off by a bus, and then he starts doing shadow puppets for the onlookers. And then Dave and Mike finding Ooh. this out before they could <laughs> Dave and Mike finding this out before they could help. The puppet turns into a monster and eats no, no, the no. entire let, let me stop you right. Dinosaur. They could have helped. Dave begged uh Mike begged Dave to get out and let's, help. Let's and just kill see him. what happens. And he was like, No, no, no. I want yeah. to see what happens. Yeah, let's he just wait. To, he wanted to see the shadow puppets. That's all. It, it was, was very a good, neat. It was a it was a good show. It was. It was. It was, it cool. was fantastic. Yeah. And to do that at night, amazing. amazing. So good. So good. There wasn't was even like a uh, that, that, to do it. What's that famous <laughs> painting with like George Washington like on the boat and like holding the flag and shit? He did that. Oh my god, the yeah. Delaware crossing the yes, Delaware. Yes. Did that too. Yes. Uh, Curtis still think everything's a joke. Mike goes up to the Terenzi brothers, letting him know the clowns are killing people. Jumbo goes and pays Curtis a visit and takes out some flowers and further pisses an already pissed off Curtis. Are those for me? <laughs> You're in Jumbo. Mooney's town now. Get in there. <laughs> Jumbo lets Curtis arrest him and uh, he takes him to the holding cell with the punks from earlier and even randomly hitting him with a nightstick when he puts him into the cell. It pisses him off and Jumbo counters that with birthday whistle. 
that takes Curtis out and knocks him against the cell. The freaking birthday whistle turns so, into a fucking hand. So what are you in here for? <laughs> they look so scared, poor guys. Oh my god. The way his like uh his head like he smashes him on the back and it was seamless. It was like it like bounced up and whoever was in the suit just like spun it real fast. Yeah. Dude, I, I gotta say it. It wasn't cheesy, it wasn't hokey, it was very well done. I love these suits and masks like this whole like this whole thing. They haven't really done masks like this in a very long time. Creepy. Love it. So good. Uh Dave, Dave back at the police station sees that shit isn't right, and he's met with Jumbo using Curtis as a puppet, even talking to him through him. That was so awesome. Uh, yeah. Oh. Dave starts. <laughs> Can we yeah. talk about real fast that uh, yeah. Mooney earlier, like the foreshadowing and what he said? Remember when he's like, nobody makes a dummy out of me. Like, yeah. and he literally, they made a dummy, made a dummy, out, dummy of out of him. Like, are you kidding me? I oh think the most amazing, you know how we talk about like creepy ass lines, like it's Tamra home. Yeah. Um, like we, we, we said, like it is, it's not the cold out there. It's death approaching. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When Mooney leans forward and he's got no makeup on except for just like a, a clearly like just powder and then rosy cheeks and then two little blood dribbles. Blood dribbles. And yeah. when he leans forward and the camera like zooms in and he just goes, Don't worry, Dave. We just want to kill you. Dude, it is creepy. That like I don't know if that's line for line what he said, it's but like, you it's get like the some gist. dead, dead it silent was, yeah. shit. It was pretty creepy. Yeah. Dead silence should have watched that scene and taken notes. Right. That's how you do a fucking human ventriloquist. That was creepy as shit. And if anything was going to give me nightmares in this movie, it's that scene. Sad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, it, shit isn't right. I met with Jumbo using Curtis as a puppet, even talking to him through him. Dave starts firing shots, but nothing phases him. And finally, a shot to his nose makes him spin around and explode. <laughs> it do glitter everywhere. <laughs> so, everywhere. Uh, only a clown would die like that. <laughs> Terenzi, bro- <laughs> Terenzi brothers and Mike going through town. We see the clowns with a parade style float going through town, taking everyone and turning them all into cotton candy cocoons. And they dr- and they drive away before they can get cocoon themselves. And Justin, it is your turn. Let's that, go. Let's. Sorry, what that, do you got? That you- parade scene is oh. so amazing. So, do they have like a giant, like almost like vacuum cleaner thing? And yes, just dude, lo- just like, sucking everyone it's like up. A, it's like they're feeding down. people out of the windows and shit. There's like confetti and everything on the streets, like it's a parade float, just yeah, sucking really, everybody up. It's so good. And they got the guy, the clown on the bottom, just blasting anyone they see. You see guys like hiding and running, and like yeah, when that dude comes toss. out from under the car and sprints away, and you see that clown with like the rainbow Beatles haircut spin he's around, like, and he's, he's like, like bang, bang. <laughs> oh, it's it's so good. And then right away, right, like transitioning from that scene, we get a cut to uh, Debbie in her own bathroom. And this scene straight out, like, remind me of like Nightmare on Elm Street. Out of nowhere, all of a sudden, she gets out of the out of the shower and we see out of like the hamper, out of the mirror, out of the toilet, we get like worm clowns. Like these things yes, that straight yes. out look like they should have been coming from Freddy. So now they're all snapping at her and everything. And she, she's she's wanting for her life. She actually even goes to jump out the window, and we see clowns at the bottom of the window, like waiting for her with like yeah, a with trampoline. the trampoline. Dude, I love that. They were rehearsing that, it. like uh, the fireman scene. Yeah, you know like a, yeah. yeah. So she she runs. She can't jump out there, and she ends up. Uh, she turns around and Slim's there, and Slim actually blasts her in, traps her in a giant yellow balloon. Um, in the meantime, we see Mike and the ice cream bros. Uh, chasing Slim and Debbie because as they arrive, they see the cloud Slim run away with the friggin' her in the balloon. So we get this awesome chase scene as they're chasing Slim. Uh, the, we see Dave the cop chase them. So now we have an awesome three way chase. <laughs> like, wait, what do you this got? fucking chase scene, dude. I, I can't even handle it. And then never mind the, the cop, uh, Dave ends up smashing into the friggin' ice cream bros. So I'm just going to call yeah, the ice cream like, bros. He's like, ice cream bros. stop the ice cream truck. The cops are behind us. And he slams on the brake. And you hit Mike in the back. Of, what the fuck are you doing? He's with us. So stupid. The guy who's on your You're chasing a killer clown that has Debbie trapped in a yellow balloon. 
keep going. Better He's on your side. No, I, I don't want to get a ticket, bro. I yeah, play. he's like so paranoid. <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah, they're pissed, and they end up going all together. So Dave is going to just drive the ice cream truck now, and they're going to the amusement park. They um, We see them pull up to the amusement park, the clowns first, of course, and we see one random security guy just hanging out there in the dark, and we see uh, one clown get out, and all of a sudden we see Slim get out. And then Bibbo gets out. And then Chubby. Pies, and then Rudy. Boys. And then, yeah, and then Shorty. And he says, ah, the park's closed. Uh, what do you... And they all have pies. He asks him, what are you going to do with those pie, boys? Yeah, they gave him a cream pie. Dude, this dude gets cream. Oh, this dude gets <laughs> pie all over the face. <laughs> Judge Just Justin. A hundred, I, a hundred pies <laughs> in his face. Dude, and he's he starts, acting the second it starts hitting him? He starts melting and disintegrating. <laughs> And the best part ever is he just turns into like an ice cream sundae. And then we see Shorty take a giant chip. Ch- what the fuck? We see Sean stick falling. Time out. Yeah. All right, we're back. We're good. We're Gucci. All right, give me a second. All right. I oh. can't believe my whole thing just fell down. So after this dude turns into an ice cream sundae, we see Shorty jump and put the biggest cherry on top. The greatest thing I've ever seen. And then the clown. So happy about it. So it was just what a great Whoa. scene. And then the four, then uh, the rest of the guys, they all arrive and they start to w- walk through the attractions. And the aesthetics of this is incredible. We got like just fog machines going. This is like so foggy. They're all walking through there. They're telling them, "All right, we gotta, we gotta stick together." And all of a sudden, uh, the p- pizza bro, ice cream bros, sorry, uh, <laughs> Terenzi yeah, brothers, pizza bros, just fall through. Like into a ball pit, they just fall through the floor into a ball pit, and we see clown girls who's all of a sudden the zungas, yeah, their boobs start inflating, and we see them looking pretty, uh, pretty happy about it. Actually, um, he gets so happy, and he just simply instead of getting freaked out and running away because they look like monsters, he goes, "You must be Debbie's roommates." She gets so excited. Yeah, I do. These are clown girls. Like, run for your life, for love of God. But anyway, we see Mike and Dave keep going, and we see cocoons everywhere right now. And then we see they are spotted by Chubby. So Chubby starts uh, following them. As they hide behind the cocoons, we see Chubby drinks the blood through a crazy clown straw into, like, the cotton candy. And so we kind of see the what they're doing to these people. And then all of a sudden, they see the yellow balloon. Like, oh, my God, like, there's Debbie. So they shoot Debbie out of the yellow balloon. She's free. Let's go. But unfortunately, Spikey and Bibbo spot them. They're running for their life. Dave's blasting a few of them. But uh, these clowns are coming. We jump down fire poles. There's crazy, like. Why'd you guys stop here? Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, they see this crazy clowns chomping. I don't even know what kind of monster that thing was. But uh, so now they are running for the life. We're going through balloons everywhere. They're going through mazes. They get to the end of a hallway and there's doors and doors and doors times four. They finally get through all of them. Insta- inst- Sorry. You Just okay? pissed off with Mike. Yeah. Dude, they're trying to get out of there. They're fighting for this life. And he takes the time after every door he opens to go, another yes. door. And another one. And another, another door. One. He, yeah, he literally another door. Dude, just yeah. go as fast as you, you can. You can hear his. Officer Dave going, can you hurry up? DJ yeah, no, Space Clown. Yeah, he literally <laughs> turns and like smiles at them and points another one. Like, what Look how small they're getting. This is so oh, cool. Oh, my God. So finally, when he gets all through the 19 doors, they end to another room. But now we're in a little bit of a trouble right now because now all the clowns are there. Clowns we haven't even seen yet. There is just an army of clowns. Like Sean said, there's like 40-something clouds. They're, they are all here. And they start climbing up onto a platform. All the clowns are closing in on them now. It does not look good. And then, boom, smash. In come the ice cream. I'm Jojo the, the clown. Respect my authority. Yeah, they're using the radio there to try to trick the clowns, and all the clowns have no clue what's going on, where the voice is coming from. Maybe they should probably stop. But then something weird happens. We see a giant clown being like lower down from the sky. It's got like strings and shit. I thought Dude. they were going to control this thing like it, yeah. it was a puppet. Yeah. This was a weird entrance, and we see Clownzilla. Let's go. <laughs> Clownzilla, Clownzilla literally picks up this ice cream truck, and he just launches it, and it explodes, and it does not look good for them. No. And in the meantime, we got Dave fighting for his life. He is shooting at them as he is battling for his life. We see Mike and Debbie run for it. They get outside in the parking lot. 
as Dave's in there still battling, of course, now all of a sudden all the cops decided pulling up in there. And we see the giants, the circus tent, just start spinning in the air. It's like like, like, a, like a, a dreidel or a top or yeah. something. Yeah, a carousel. It, it's, like, it's like lifting up and like getting ready to take off. And all of a sudden we splash back to Dave in there fighting. And we see Dave, he grabs his like badge and he pops the nose of Clownzilla. Dude, this thing is massive, and you were unloading shotgun shells and handgun bullets into it, and all it takes is the, the the stabby yeah. end of okay. your, your badged up, little, little, just a little, just a just, little prick, just a little prick, just, just a pen prick to the nose. This thing explodes. We see it back from outside now that the whole entire tent explodes, and as it explodes, we see fireworks. It's a fireworks show now. We got fireworks shooting. Yeah, everywhere. at least it's beautiful. Yeah, exactly. Nice. We we it's see good. uh. Debbie and Mike just like, oh my god, and all of a sudden the ice cream like truck smash. Oh, maybe it wasn't the, the, the truck clown truck. car from earlier. Yeah, the clown car smashes next to him, and we see Dave survive. Let's go, and then we Whoop. also see the ice cream. The Terenzi survive. brothers, and they're like, wait, how did you guys survive? Like we saw it explode, and they uh they hid in the ice <laughs> cream the freezer. freezer, so they are all alive. And then we hear Debbie say, "Do you think it's over?" And then out of nowhere, we just get pies all on their face, and then boom, cue the badass. Music game over. Over. Killer get, clowns. When, 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 that, when all the cops showed up, I don't know if it was an error, but did you guys notice the female cop with the extremely curly hair? They used the zoom in on her face twice. The exact Wait, same that? shot. Really? Yeah. They had to save they had to save money. You know. Right. Yeah. Spent it's it all on clowns. Justin, since this was your pick. And you made us sit through this diabolical circus tent. Right. Why don't you tell us your final thoughts and your rating? My thought, my final thoughts. Oh, my God. My, my final, final thoughts. thoughts. My final oh. thoughts. My thought. Th- oh, my God. I can't. Sorry. Late, late concert last night. My brain's a little scrambled. Where did that come from? It's a water boy. See, I'm getting a lot of laugh. That's pretty right, sorry, that just th- How did you? All right. Never mind. All right. Where am I? Um, uh, in your in your bedroom, maybe. Yeah, no, I, I I can talk without opening my mouth. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say I I apologize for this brain fighting. If anyone who's not watching on YouTube on Spotify, that probably sounded terrible. But if you couldn't see what was happening. Waterboy was talking without his lips moving, and I honestly did not know which one of them that was coming from. So uh, <laughs> kind of freaked me out for a second. But my final <laughs> thoughts are: I love this movie so much. It's a ridiculous movie. The, it's all the eighties like campiness overacting ridiculousness but it all works the movie does it perfect you see some movies that take themselves a little too serious they don't balance it out that good this movie nails it like they do all the -the over-the-top goofiness perfect mixed in with some actual like creepy parts especially if you watch it like when you're younger like Mm -hmm. i first did back in the day but uh, i'm just gonna go off of my rating rating right now i'm rating this on the unbelievable fun fun scale factor and i'm giving this a 9.2 out of 10 Absolutely love it. Nine point two. I was Let's right there. Go. Someone I was else right thought. there. Well, I'm going to take us home. I'm rating this a nine out of ten. And it's uh, dude. What? I'm gonna. Let's I'm gonna. Go. I'm. I'm gonna say it. When I saw this movie, it did creep me out when I was younger. But seeing it, and even, yes, my, even my even my kids like watching this movie. Like yeah. I've rented this movie probably like four months ago just for them to watch it, and they love it too. They, it's 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 just a great B horror movie. It's a staple for eighties horror and. Uh, like the way they did the clowns, it's just it's just amazing for its time, and it's probably still gonna be like that years and years and years. Oh, yeah. I will say I'm so glad they didn't franchise this. Yes, you know what I mean? That this is a one-off movie and it is perfect just the way it is. They I, I hope to God they don't somebody doesn't try to remake this. We need yeah, we need more one-offs. Like when movies are like just like this, like just leave yeah, it. Just leave it. It's alone. perfect. Yeah. I mean, you've done so much shit to other shit. Just like leave this alone, please. Yeah. Uh, I've got Officer Mooney played by John Vernon absolutely steals this fucking show. I know he's not the main character, but he kills this movie. I Great. challenge you I both to tell voice. me. Yeah, he. he oh, no, I love dude. There's so many different parts. That I love like his voice is so awesome. How we just kept hanging up on people, not believing it. Um, yeah, yeah I, God I mean, dang I kids. That. The Torrenzi brothers got the whole town in on this. Not Officer Mooney. Not on my watch. 
No, I was just going to say the contrast of the two cops, like you mentioned earlier, is so ridiculous. How ridiculous, like, Dave is. Polar opposite. to him, it, it's, uh, it's so fun. It works so well. So well. Uh, the dialogue in this movie is just over-the-top goofy and fun. The clowns are amazing. And the fact that there is 41 clowns and each of them brings their own, like, character and background and, like, special abilities. Like pers- personality. It's just- such depth to this movie that doesn't even let you know how in depth it is. And it's actually like its own little clown universe. And you don't even know it until you like start actually digging into this movie to try to understand it more than just watching it. Uh, The kills are so fucking creative and fun. We get a puppet show kill pizza delivery kills, imaginary motorcycle rides that run cars off the road and off a bridge. We get shadow puppets that eat people. We get a death by pie scene. Holy Boston cream, Batman. I love this movie so much. The ventriloquist scene with Mooney is over the top and it's top notch done. It's beautiful. Even the goddamn boss battle at the end. That's like some crazy horror survival game. FYI, killer clowns from out of space. The board bang coming to a dinner table near you soon. Yeah. I give this movie a 9.3 out of 10. This will be added to my movie list of trapped on a fucking desert island to bring with me. This yes. movie is if you if y'all still around listening to this, shut us off and go sit down and watch this. Do yourself a Do favor it. if you haven't seen it, it and sit down and watch this because this needs to be seen by all eyeballs on in the universe. <clears throat> Dude, and even shout out to never mind the first like the intro. Dude, the the theme song by the dickies like that famous like so good in so good and also another well he's not even an unsung hero like the john masari the guy who did the score the killer clown march all the music in this movie is unbelievable the sound effects just all the stupid sound effects of everything uh like i said that the the music in this movie besides the dickies uh, it's there's so like it's so good like what a great score when when you bring up the score and the sound effects and the music and all that stuff yeah. this movie reminded me because we've watched a lot of more recent movies how yeah. lazy some like production has gotten with using yeah. just simple already written music already yeah. pre-recorded tracks like nothing specifically made for the movie. For the movie. This right. blows it out of the water. Everything in this movie is made for this movie, specifically done by this movie, for this movie, for the people to enjoy it and created with that circus crazy. Like, dude, I, I can smell popcorn and fucking cotton candy just talking about it. It's it's like every yeah, you're you're absolutely right. Everything for this movie was basically made from scratch. Dude, the sound effects, even when they were like in the place, like hitting like the buttons to open the door, it was like boop, 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 boop. like yeah. it was the most ridiculous. So absolutely insanely so insane. Oh, anyone got any fun facts? I did not. The only fun fact I have, and like did I not. told you guys at the beginning, is I fell so in love with just watching this movie on fucking repeat that I even forgot to take my notes until last night. <laughs> that is hilarious. I do want to touch on a few fun facts because there's one I'm not even sure. I don't know if you guys know or not, but it's like my favorite thing ever. But um, all right. Well, the first common ones we're just gonna say I, the theme songs by the punk band the Dickies, and I mean not that I know anything about this band called uh, Insane Clown Posse, but I don't know if anyone's ever heard the song "The Staleness" from um the Wraith Shanga Lee. But they the whole song starts off with Mooney. It's all sampled from Mooney's speech. It is so awesome. If it Wait, goes what's in, who's ICP? I'm sorry. I, I don't. So I don't know who likes them. This is a weird band. But if oh. listen to the song called "The Staleness." Especially after this. It's all sampled from Officer Mooney. Incredible. I got uh, the girl, Debbie, who's Suzanne Snyder. She was also in Night of the Creeps and Return of the Living Dead, too. So she's actually been in some awesome horror movie. Pretty sure her name was actually Debbie in another one of those two movies. Um, Shout out to the director. We got Steven Chiodo. He actually did special effects in Critters. And I just want to mention that because I love Critters. And let's see here. We got... You know what? We're we're, do, we're going all out for this episode, so we're doing a Halloween reference too right now. We got oh, yeah. I was oh, hoping you'd bring it up. Oh yeah, we're, let's we're, go. We're, like let's just oh let's go. So we got one of the main special effects guy in this whole entire film who's done special effects in so many horror movies. His name is Bart Mixon, and he actually did the special effects in Rob Zombie's Halloween Two. Let's go. <laughs> and and, and <laughs> 
This is my favorite fun fact ever about this movie, which I'm going to actually shout out a co-worker right now. Uh, Jackson actually knew this, and he actually mentioned it to me, which I was shocked that he knew. Do you guys remember Ernest Scared Stupid? Yes. Anyone seen Ernest movie. Scared Stupid? Do you know what I'm about to say then? No, I don't. All right, I so haven't Ernest... seen Ernest Scared Stupid since VHS was a thing. All right, so Ernest Scared Stupid came out in 1991. This one came out in 1988. Well, the special effects in Ernest Gets Stupid was done by the Chiodo brothers, which one of them, Stephen Chiodo, directed this. But not only that is my favorite. If you go back and look at a few of those trolls in that movie, they might look familiar. To save money, they took these clown costumes, specifically two of them. There's two trolls, and they painted them. They painted them just brown um one of them was feel like I'm, I'm look, oh yeah i'm looking at you to right right next to you i feel oh, like fuck. that might have been one i was gonna say he was one of them and i forget what the other one was but if you look this up look, i gotta go in, i gotta go watch that now type in Ernest gate stupid trolls killer clowns or something i'm sure there has to be an article on it you will see they just they just slightly modified it and they painted the faces like brownish green and that's that is fucking like my awesome favorite, dude it is like my favorite thing ever because that movie those trolls scared the crap out of me, and it's hilarious to know that there was a tie-in with the killer Shit. clowns. That's so, so cool. I, I decided that was like my favorite thing ever, and I couldn't wait to tell everyone that. That is so cool, and I, I and I remember that movie like the troll scaring the shit out of me when I was a kid yeah. when I watched that. Beautiful. Oh. All right, hack stab slash. Since you rode with us this long, we're gonna add two more movies to the Wheel of Terror. My movie choice. Hopefully, it's not the same as Justin's because we haven't discussed this. It's a wonderful, another movie that I think is a beautiful double feature with this. It's going to be The Stuff. All right. Oh, yeah. I, I honestly I, thought that I thought that was already on the list. My bad. Um, it's not. All right. I am going to go with a new one. So if it hits it, it forces to watch us something, something current. Um, Late Night with the Devil. Dude, that didn't that just hit 100 percent on Rotten Tomatoes too? Yes, and yeah. people are saying it's like a weird 70s feel with like a possession 70s creepy feel. Yes. So it's uh, something there, I normally like, wouldn't pick. There's like a picture that's floating around of them. I haven't seen anything about this movie. No me trailers, neither. no nothing. Yeah. The yeah, only no, thing I've seen is this picture where it looks like they're on like the Wheel of Fortune or the Price is Right. Yeah, and same thing. That's not a movie I normally would pick, so that's why I want to put it to the Wheel of Fortune. So I mean, the Wheel yeah. of Terror, just so it would force me to. Uh, here's watch. a little seven year old girl currently possessed by the devil. We'd like yeah. to know your price on how many souls it'll take to get her back. Yeah, I'll right. take two, Bob. <laughs> we got two over here. Do we have any others? <laughs> All right. So here's our wheel. Here's our wheel of terror hack stabs. Hack stab slash that. that, that. <laughs> hack, hack, hack stab that. slash. Now that Justin's done peeing and Waterboy has got us good to go. We're going to spin this biosh. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's see what we get. Anything but Hellraiser. I probably just jinxed us. If we even had to watch Hellraiser. Shut up. Justin with his first. What? Let's go. Late night with the devil. You heard it here first. Late night ah, with the devil. See you next week. Let's go. We out. Uh, Peace. Later. Later. Peace.